I'm delighted to introduce one of our trustees, Achilles Petsky-Konstantinou. Um, Achilles was um, our lead organizer of the 2018 conference that we held in Athens. Um, and uh, he's been a great supporter um, of what we've been doing over the years. We've looked uh, on with great admiration at his and George Bulimenos's work um, that he will talk to us about this evening, um, about the, the reconstruction of the old uh, Smyrna cave. Uh, um, uh, Achilles has a, a background in uh, geology and, and geography, so he's sort of well equipped uh, for the research that uh, he's been carrying out, um, and uh, he uh, lives and works in uh, Athens. Um, so without uh, anything more from me, I'm going to hand over to Ed. We'll have questions, comments um, after he finished his speaking. If you'd like to um, ask a question and uh, comfortable using the Zoom raise hand function, please do. Otherwise, turn on your video and wave at me. Or you can use the Zoom chat function and I will read out your question. So uh, I will stop sharing and uh, over to you, Achilles. Thank you, Quentin, for your kind words. Uh, and thanks to Craig for uh, organizing this wonderful opportunity to meet all of you. Uh, I will just share my screen. You see my screen? Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, hold on, how we uh, all this uh, the, uh, adventure that we've been through with uh, George uh, George Polymenos uh, for more than ten years since we since we started to research uh, the Smyrna cave, uh, most prominent part of, uh, of the city, the city of my ancestors. And uh, what we, in order to construct, uh, reconstruct this legendary face of the most important uh, Ottoman city port, uh, we uh, studied each and every one of the 200 structures on the Smyrna cave by the time of the Great Fire on the September 1922. Uh, we accurately uh, uh, produced a drawing, we identified them, we studied their history, geography. Uh, our research uh, was also extended to the individuals, to the families, officers, dignitaries, businesses, all sorts of events connected to these buildings within a period spanning from 75 to 1922, and in some cases, even extended until today. You see, this has changed many, many times over the years, and uh, the buildings, the houses, everything else lived more than one life. What was the result? It was more than a panorama uh, of this process. I call a unique city biography than before. our research back in 2018 in a two volume almost 800 pages edition as Mirna K tracing a symbol of progress and splendor Capone editions we included 620 and 200 drawings the next year the book was awarded the Likurian prize of the Academy of and has since been acknowledged as an important reference material catalogued in library institutes and universities around the world, such as Ben, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Columbia, GT, etc. But MNK research continued way after 2018. Many new findings existing database, enriching our knowledge. So 2024, this year, the proceedings will be published as a page supplement in Migrasiatica Chronica. Asia Minor Chronicles, the Journal of Venus Mineon. 
based on this evidence, not only we completed our research, but all of the first time it became possible to draw safe conclusions on the presence the, and the relations of the various communities of Smyrna, be it Greeks, Europeans and Americans, Armenians, Jews. So a little bit of background uh, history information. Smyrna was since the middle of the 18th century. So while the commerce boomed, the only to trade was through the numerous peers. So the potential profits is what persuaded the VAC who owned the coastline to split it in lots and rent it long term, practically sell it to locals and foreigners. So although the first team seed as early as 1833, by the 1850s, only a small part of the seafront called English Pier had a form of a K. In uh, 1867, that the Sublime Port grants construction and exploitation rights to three Englishmen, Sarno, Barker, and Corazzino, who formed the Smyrna K Company and who themselves assigned it to the French Dussault brothers. Due to the lack of capital, Dussault finally set up their own company and took over the project. You can see this uh, uh, map, early map uh, from the 1865, how uh, the uh, coastline is already cut into many, many different plots. It is uh, as if all the players, the key players of Smyrna, the, the big merchants are waiting for the care and they took their positions in order to be ready for the big bank. But the, the K is not the cause for this progress of Smyrna, it's the catalyst. The 19th century transformation of Smyrna into this booming community that we know was a multi-factor process triggered by science, the invention of engine politics, uh, the breakout of the war and its aftermath, and the rise of global commerce, uh, which was uh, uh, facilitated by the opening of the Suez Canal. When all came together, the need for the modern harbor and care in Smyrna was undeniable. You can in this early panorama uh, of, uh, of this, uh, how uh, the sea uh, of the Smyrna is full of, uh, of ships, used it as a big open harbor. And uh, actually, in fact, there is no quay at this moment, but it doesn't mean uh, that this city is not functioning as a huge uh, commercial hub. But shaping uh, the waterfront did not come without a cost. Uh, the final construction plan of this uh, 3,325 meter uh, line of the new waterfront uh, from the Aydin railway station all the way down to the Imperial Barracks at the south with an extension of land over the sea on an average of 50 meter width did all aspects of life in Smyrna for these six long years, and not everyone was, including foreign merchants and uh, boatmen. You can understand the interruption of life as they knew it. The merchants were free due to the regime of capitulations to trade without giving anything uh, uh, to the state. Uh, and uh, the boatmen actually were the lords since it was only up to them to transfer the goods uh, to and from the boats, the ships that arrived uh, in the harbor. Uh, pictures, uh, the one that in the top left is actually Smyrna, but is completely unrecognizable because it's before the construction. See all these wooden piers that uh, um, uh, would be totally erased by the big uh, new projects. Uh, at the, at the uh, right image, the works have already started how uh, the sea is slowly uh, re retreating uh, by the new land. The, the works were far from over. This is the, the first map of the modern city. The K here, and all the white parts and the 50 new building blocks, a new city demarcated by two new 
the seafront boulevard, the K Boulevard and the street uh, that uh, uh, bombed uh, Smyrna. And uh, the evolution, in order to understand, better understand the evolution, I put to place together three different phases of it. Uh, one is the 56 Louis de Storari map, uh, the first official of Smyrna commissioned uh, by the Sublime Port uh, to this uh, Italian uh, engineer. And it was, then uh, in the middle is uh, a part of the map that I showed you, the Lamexad map. And the third one, which is actually a very important one, is the one created by George uh, and actually shows how Smyrna looked uh, by 1922. This map, the different colors um, uh, demarcate the neighborhoods of Smyrna, Punta, Bella Vista, Pragomahalas, etc. And uh, I also added the sections of, uh, of the K, the residential, the recreational, commercial and administrative that we had to uh, create in order to um, study, study the nature and uh, the structures on each and every one of them. We are lucky because uh, each part of the K, for instance, the residential, a very big degree of variety. Uh, uh, so uh, it, this allows us, allows us to uh, look at it in a certain way. So oh, now I'm going to uh, present you key sources that we used in order to uh, accomplish our uh, research. Uh, a very important source is the traveler guides. These books that every traveler uh, coming from Europe to the East uh, had uh, to carry with him in his pocket. Um, the Marais and the Bedeker are the two uh, most uh, ones because they include all this detailed information about each and every place uh, that uh, the traveler is going to visit. Look at this uh, map of Smyrna, 1895, how detailed it is. It includes all these information, the churches, the hospitals, the, the consulates. It's a very, very uh, good source of information for us. Of course, uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, presents Mirna in a certain uh, time, uh, time frame. So this is the city in 1895. Uh, other guides that uh, were published before or afterwards. And it's very interesting to um, record the changes happening over time. Insurance maps. Uh, this is a cartography of uh, commerce and wealth. Very, very uh, source of information because it gives us uh, not just the same spots uh, in, this, in the commercial part of the city, but also information about the owner, the goods, even the uh, type of, uh, of the material. Because as I said, this is an insurance map. So if, if a, a building is, is made of uh, brick, or stone or uh, wood it's, uh, a lot of difference uh, in the uh, amount of money you have to pay uh, to get it insured this is from uh, this is the famous goat insurance map 1905 the only drawback that i can think of in this case is that this covers only certain section of uh, of the k uh, because uh, this is where the insurance companies were interested the offices, the depots, uh, the, not um, the uh, housing. Property maps. Uh, this is a surprising source of information that uh, if you asked me when we started our, um, our endeavor with George, I would never uh, uh, imagine that we will be able to find not, not two, but three of them. Each in the uh, uh, the each and the on the K 
and even on the second line, the second line of uh, of houses at a different time zone in 1889, 19, and the Izmir cadaster of 1936-37. There is a time distance of 20 years approximately between them. Enormously important source of information. We now have the names of the owners. Uh, that it's, it's a, 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 data, a database that cannot be found anywhere. So the first two are uh, clearly connected to the work Société de Quai, uh, because after all, it's company's uh, business to keep a, a catalog, a registry of these uh, ownerships, because uh, they earn money by uh, selling the plots uh, to them and uh, because they also have to give a percentage of the profits to the state. Uh, these two particular time uh, snapshots are obviously to changes in the administration of, of the company and uh, in our book, uh, in our published edition, we only had uh, um, uh, the first on the left. The one in the middle showed up six months after the publication of the book. Uh, this, uh, someone would say, is the nightmare of a research to publish something and then find new evidence. But for us, I think we should consider it a blessing. Uh, and I will explain why later on. And then we have the annuars and the indicators, uh, the user guide of the city. All the, pro the professions are included, or at least uh, almost all of them. Uh, it's uh, they are published annually, so we have a, a, a continuous uh, series of uh, of these books uh, where we uh, can um, uh, the evolution of uh, of business uh, uh, starting from uh, the father inherited by the son and then moving on and on, change location. Uh, it's, uh, I think, uh, a quite neglected, if you ask me, source of information, but uh, again, quite valuable. The newspapers, uh, the trip uh, and the everyday life news are in them, but you never know what you find in the newspapers back then, just as it happened today. Uh, it's not just Amalthea. Uh, the most famous one uh, of Smyrna, but many more that uh, were uh, on circulation uh, back then. Uh, I'm sorry to say that uh, if I could read Ottoman or if I could read Armenian, then I, I would have uh, uh, the advantage of, uh, of having access to even more newspapers. But then again, with uh, hundreds of pages, year after year, uh, looking for even the slightest uh, news about the death of a merchant or about the opening of a theater play or uh, about uh, an announcement made by, by uh, governor. Anything that would be related to K one way. Uh, for instance, to the right, I have uh, this uh, magnified this article from the paper of uh, 11th of October, 1913, when uh, Amalthea announces the transfer of the telegraph service to uh, Hotel Hook, which uh, then no longer uh, functioned. Tell why this information is important, because this map in the middle, the property map of the Société, the Société de Quai, had no chronology. So it was this particular event that allowed us to date it. Then we have the family archives and the genealogies. Uh, as you understand, uh, all these come across hundreds of names of people living uh, in trading in, Izmir, in Smyrna or a, a certain connection relation to the place. There are not many sources out there like Levantine Heritage Foundation where you can find 
uh, all this material, uh, uh, like uh, family archive, memoirs, and of course, uh, the genealogy give us all this uh, information about the relation of these families. Uh, Smyrna was a society of, uh, of people that closely interrelated to each other. They married families uh, into each other and uh, religion and ethnic identity was not uh, an obstacle to it. We have Armenians uh, ma married uh, with uh, Europeans and uh, all sorts of inside their family trees uh, from, uh, from England, from France. Uh, it, it is a, a very peculiar case uh, of uh, society to study. The panoramas, the panoramas we have uh, a single, uh, the, almost the entire uh, K in a single snapshot that will be dated. This is very important because uh, in most cases we have uh, uh, one or two, three, four uh, houses or buildings in one frame, in one photographic frame, very difficult to get, uh, to date it, to place it in the right order, chronological or geographical when compared to. So a panorama allows us to have this composite view of the city, which is also changing it. On, on the top, you can see the 1876 panorama, which is actually the f after the construction of the K. The K is there, the road but the buildings are not there yet. And you have the 1920s, which is actually a very well-known one, where uh, we would say that uh, this is the finalized uh, phase of the city. Look how different they look. And of course, the postcards. The postcards, in my opinion, is what made uh, Smyrna famous all over the world. They created this... Uh, they elevated K into a landmark for uh, everyone else to admire, uh, to uh, long to visit the city. There are uh, literally perhaps thousands of, of postcards. Yeah, I think uh, uh, the K of Smyrna is one of the most photographed uh, places in the 19th century. Uh, during our research, we had the chance to take a closer look into this type of house, the Zmirnian house. Uh, it, perhaps the, it, when you look at it, all you see is a, two a, a series of two stories that look almost identical to each other. If you watch really carefully, you realize that they are not identical. There are certain differences between them and also that they are not raised. There, are, there could be even five stories buildings because you have the you have uh, the ground floor which is a bit elevated, you have a middle floor hidden. Uh, 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 and it's only reachable through the stairs. The stairs. You have the upper floor, and you have uh, on top. Let's see an example, the Papa Dimitriou house, which is still surviving. Uh, I think it's a uh, current operation. Look how lovely uh, the skylight uh, is. It's on top of the staircase and uh, it provides uh, light inside the, the house. And a few uh, images from the interior with all the decoration. It belongs to textile merchant, a very rich uh, person who could afford a house on the quay, of course. And look at the ground plan of the house, how long it is. It actually extends from the boulevard all the way back to the parallel street. If you look at the cross, it, it actually looks like three houses combined together. And of course, such a long house should have uh, comforts like this uh, uh, communication, how should I say, 
uh, matrix where all these bells are uh, by the people serving the servants of the house in order to communicate with their masters from different rooms. So how do we actually got from a view of the K uh, structures to the drawings that uh, we created uh, and we put inside our book? Uh, as you can see, uh, the K itself, it's a very narrow road, uh, about uh, 15 to 20 meters uh, wide. So the camera, there's nowhere to put a camera in order to get uh, a nice view of the house. If you do such a thing, you will only get one or not even one of them into the frame. So we followed uh, a certain process. We actually invented our methodology, uh, a geometrical process of correction, orthorectification and delineation in order to, to uh, start from this oblique view, turn uh, uh, house, uh, mansion, uh, now gone to this to this one and uh, the scale a rectified one and from it to delineate all the details that we wanted to include in our drawing i have to remind you that uh, neither me or joe architects but still i think our uh, drawing accurate or at least we tried to CSI Smyrna, a bunch of information included in all these photographs and images about, especially about uh, the commercial part of the of the care, with names, names uh, of uh, hotels, names of uh, cafes, of all sorts of houses. Uh, this is not a typical, should I say, photograph that we came across because this is pretty clear. We can read. We can read. Uh, the labels uh, uh, very clearly. This is not a typical case. But uh, even if we find this, we had to combine it uh, with uh, entries uh, in into the and the indicators, the commercial guides, in order to uh, cross when this uh, uh, business uh, was active, and also. Uh, find information into the newspapers uh, 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 testified uh, these events. So it, it's, uh, it's a process uh, complicated, uh, but it was quite rewarding. Uh, me and George were, uh, tried to celebrate uh, whenever uh, a finding that uh, was uh, unexpected, quite unexpected, and trust many, many of them. Smyrna, if it's a synonym of the Swade Viver, that was uh, uh, made for, it was entertainment. So, from the annual uh, commercial guides, photographs, the archive, archival sources, we recorded no less than 307 businesses related to and entertainment that operated between 1876 and 1922. Uh, this is a huge number. Uh, Obviously, it means that uh, these businesses started did, and were succeeded by others because uh, uh, the, the, the care has a, a defined uh, length. The, the buildings were used and reused and rented and re-rented over and over again. Uh, so uh, we tried to support uh, the time of each and every one of these that were active. So far, we have managed to identify the exact look of a little more than half of them. So there are a lot uh, to do in the future, provided, of course, that we come across more evidence. There is no uh, is a mecca for entertainment entrepreneurship. Uh, you can see in this uh, wonderful image the Eden, uh, a place uh, where you can play cards, you could uh, have uh, food, you can listen to music, uh, you can uh, see open air theater, you can see it at the back stage of an open air theater. So 
finally know not only exactly where on the quay every winter or summer theater, cinema, and music cafe was, but also who owned them, the major players of the market, their background, the size of their investment, their business, how they managed to alter it over time, successfully or not. There's no business business and it couldn't be more true uh, uh, elsewhere, elsewhere than uh, on the Smyrna. For instance, Jonas Kremer and successors, besides offering luxury accommodation in the famous hotel, the Kremer Palace, they envision a modern all year round type of entertainment, which includes summer and winter theaters, a skating rink, brasseries, music cafes. We're not the only ones. You can see uh, the Pate Cinema in this post and the Kramer Theater next to it. The Smyrna port is a business district always with a changing skyline. Take, for example, these two uh, photographs, one from 1995 and the other from 1910. This is the exact right next to the passport pier. Here is the passport pier. Look how different it looks only within 15 years. Structures still exist, but others were torn down and rebuilt again and again. The K is a domain of a privileged multi ethnic upper class. In this uh, slide, I tried to put together faces of many of them. It's important that now we have a face these names that we uh, came across in our you can you can see for instance uh, the father of joseph lawyer apostle salto a famous surgeon back for uh, the carpenter uh, 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 industry owner and uh, uh, parliament Elziar Giffre, uh, the president of uh, the Société de and many more. Uh, Charles uh, Homo, an aristocrat of, of Hughes. Haji Daoud Farkouh and Pandaleon owners, the two famous ship owners. But work has also some um, measurable results to show. The K reflected of the Smyrna communities. And now, with the help of uh, the two maps, property maps that I showed you, we have the means to measure exactly uh, this presence of its community. For instance, have a look at how the Greeks, uh, owners of, of Greek origin, appear on the, on the second map, 14 map. They have 17 properties out of the almost 200 are in Greek hands. Next are the Europeans and Americans. Look, uh, the Muslim presence grew 25 years. It grew by 100%. And look how uh, the absence total absence of the Jews from the Kiev Smyrna. So could we actually the way to measure who controlled the Kiev Smyrna? Can we apply statistics into essential, the recreational and the commercial section? See in more details the influence of its community. Let's have a look at the residential section on the left. It's the 1889 map, and, on, and uh, be, below it's 1914. Here, the presence of the Greeks and uh, the Europeans and, and Americans uh, together count for half of the of the houses. Or, or, but on the second map, this. Uh, uh, presence is even more, uh, is, is even larger, while uh, the others are uh, 
not uh, as, as, as big. But if we move to the recreation section, then we see something interesting happening here, that by 1914, we have Muslims, Muslim properties appearing. And into the uh, commercial and administrative section, we can see that, uh, uh, for instance, the Greeks were not really in more property than they already have. But the businesses are in This is quite interesting. I, th I propose uh, to treat the Greeks and the Levantines as a depot based, of course, on the results of the statistics, struggling for dominance over the K. Why I'm saying this? Because I noticed that there is a mobility of Greek properties that is uh, related all um, in majority with uh, the Europeans and the Americans. What this uh, graph says between the two maps, between the five years, the, the Greeks lost 13 plots to the Europeans, but also gained 13 plots from them. So that's why I think we should probably consider. Greeks and Levantines. In other words, the Greeks were not adversaries to the Muslims. They do, they, uh, they, there was no intention to take Smyrna over Muslims. The Greeks, if they wanted to replace a force uh, in the future, would be the Levantines. At least this is uh, what uh, I argue here. Moving to the years of the Greek occupation and administration, the three years of the presence of Greece on the quay, uh, we now have a better understanding of uh, the events that uh, marked this day and how connected to certain buildings uh, 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 along, uh, along the coastline. For instance, on the left, you can see uh, the marching um, Greek army passing in front of uh, the uh, uh, Hunters Club. And uh, next to it, you have uh, the incident uh, happening um, uh, in front of uh, the hotels uh, of the port, uh, leaving behind uh, uh, many dead. And in many of the buildings of, of the quay, were either occupied or assigned to Greek army services, high rank officers, and functioned uh, as uh, 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 offices for the administration directorates. For instance, the High Hunters Club was uh, the soldiers and uh, other residences were given to the financial services of uh, uh, the administration. Moving to September, to the events of the September 1922, of, of course, uh, the events, uh, entrance of the Kemalist forces uh, uh, in Smyrna and the Great Fire and the exodus of the Greeks and Armenians are well known. There are also many incidents that was uncertain where exactly they took place. Some are related to the Disaster Relief Committee, which the task of sheltering and feeding the hundreds of thousands of uh, of refugees. Uh, for instance, you can see here uh, in, uh, in this picture, the US Marines um, fencing uh, people asked for help uh, into, uh, but to uh, ask for, he for help from the DRC, uh, uh, who in, uh, in, in, um, in, in to help them by requisitioning several houses the U.S. consulate, and also to uh, find foods from the Patterson Food Depot in the harbor. After 1922, the city, uh, there was a huge effort to bring the city and the port back to life. Uh, so in the, in, the, in, the, in the area of the port, many of the buildings were half damaged. So they gained a second life uh, with repairs and of course, new ones were constructed. You can compare 
the drawing of the 1922 with uh, the way this the same area looked only a few years later. I believe, I strongly believe that the Levantine is the key to consolidating the history of the Quai, because after 1923 and the uh, foundation of the Turkish Republic, Republic, a large number of them chose to remain in Smyrna. Uh, the 1934 Izmir Gadaster, of course, that I already mentioned, include at least 16 names of persons still living or owing property there. You can see this page with all these uh, pensions uh, uh, which existed on the quay. All the owners' names are uh, foreign, are Levantines. The final blow on the quay, uh, that was uh, in the uh, There was a, a big effort metropolitan uh, uh, municipality to find a way to tackle the huge traffic problems uh, of the city. And they thought that the best way to do it was to save the waterfront again and create uh, highways uh, in front of, of, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the of the key houses. Uh, of course, there was an outcry uh, by the Chamber of Architects and many more and the works stopped, but uh, there was no turning back. So at least uh, the city uh, gained a huge green area, a huge park uh, that still exists. Now, let me take you through a, a small tour of surviving uh, structures on the quay today. We have uh, three houses in the north, uh, the Tiso, the Athanasoulas Kostadinidis, and the Korfiadaki mansions, the three consulates. Uh, actually, the middle one is the Greek consulate, still functioning today. The Takfor Spartali mansion, which is the Kemala Taturk Museum. I, when, when I uh, present this uh, picture, I always put next to it the grand plan. It's the only way to see to show how big this house is. Look at uh, how many uh, rooms it has in just one floor. And of course, uh, it is coated with marble, which is a, a, a very luxurious uh, thing to do uh, uh, in a house. The French consulate, the, uh, the Arcas Art Center, the Grand Hotel de Londres, only the facade remains with this uh, uh, very nice uh, siren uh, anaglyph over the door. The Hotel de Zipt next to it. Uh, on the right is an example of how it would look like back in 1922. There is a, a sibling, so to speak, of the same uh, uh, architecture here in Athens. Building. The Grand Hotel Paradisos uh, in a very, very poor state. I hope somebody uh, will do something drastic about it soon. Otherwise, we're probably the last uh, to, to see it. The National Bank of Greece. Uh, it's a, a wonderful building still in use today, almost exactly the way it looked uh, uh, back in 1920. The only thing missing is the turret, which was torn down in the 80s. So it has been a wonderful adventure for us uh, to study the chaos Myrna and to uh, see how this city evolved from Smyrna to Izmir. It was a very lengthy process that took uh, decades, but uh, always when uh, we see of honoring the legacy of Smyrna, it makes us very proud to be part of this big process. So this is it. Thank you uh, for your attention. And now I'm uh, ready for your questions. Excellent, Achilles. Thank you so much. Uh, fascinating piece of research, really a model 
of how to reconstruct a city from multiple sources. Um, um, so uh, ready to take questions. If anyone would like if to um, ask a question, otherwise I will um, lead off with something. Um, I was thinking about um, the winners and losers. You know, when the quay was built, uh, you mentioned the boatmen. Um, what happened to them? Did they sort of become something else? Were they able to find an economic niche and, and succeed? Well, uh, as in, in, in these cases, as it happens, uh, there's always a compromise, right? So there was a period of grace uh, where uh, uh, was given, given to people to adapt to new reality. Uh, and you can imagine there were strikes and there were protests. Uh, so it, it, it wasn't a bloodless transition to, to the new reality. But uh, I think uh, the river does not go backwards. So sooner or later, they realized that uh, uh, this is it. And it's uh, in, in the best interest, interest of everybody. Having said that, I would say that uh, at some point, I think technology and the size of the ships, uh, the maritime um, uh, evolution, uh, outpassed um, uh, the, 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 the uh, port, the Smyrna port. So uh, there were ships larger than the entrance of the port. Uh, and the, the boatmen were always necessary. Uh, it, it, I think you never, uh, you can never compete. Uh, you have to keep up at, at all costs with, uh, with technology. And if you stop doing that, then uh, you're left behind. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Um, James Bone. Do you want to ask your question or shall I read it out? You can read it out, Quentin. Or okay. I'll ask the question. Somebody else also seemed to chip in with the same question. The question is just, it was a bit puzzling um, given the influence of the Jews in the city that they had zero properties on the quay. And we wondered why that was. Was there any kind of formal prohibition or boycott, or was it just their types of business? What, what's the explanation for that? Uh... I don't have any explanation. Uh, I would probably say that uh, Smyrna for the Jewish population was not, uh, did not have the same um, uh, meaning, like Salonika, for instance. Uh, the, the, the Jewish community of Smyrna was, uh, in a sense, invisible. They, they preferred to stay uh, by their businesses. Uh, are and uh, not have uh, much public uh, presence. Perhaps uh, uh, others would like to chip in here, like uh, Philip. Philip, what do you think? Is it there? Uh, not uh, can I can I say something? Say when this is Shebnam Shanyena, by the way. Um, I was just going to say that uh, where the Havra Soko, for example, just around the bazaar um, and all those bathhouses, uh, my family owned one. They had, um, I mean, in terms of Jewish presence, they had a special uh, Jewish, uh, you know, that um, mikvah uh, in, in the bathhouses made for the Jewish community. So Jewish community was an important community. It exists in the city and, uh, and historically as well, um, for starting from the Sabbatism, you know, in this 16th century on. So it's interesting that um, you don't see their presence in the key. Hmm. Uh, any other comments, George? Any thoughts? from you, George uh, Galdes. Right, I managed to unmute. I have a theory that they 
liked and also from my past experience in the in the 50s um that they 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 prefer to to be close to live close to their synagogues the keys i e also which is called alsanjak did not have any any Synagogue or religious facilities to accommodate a a Jewish community. They like to be in Karatash, um, Kokaria Le or Guzelia, called in that sort of area. Well, they, they where they would also be in the vicinity of their local bakeries, uh, in order to celebrate the the uh, the Shabbat, the Friday night meal. Uh, and then uh, leave the the food to be baked for ready for the uh, Shabbat itself for the Saturday, and also as been uh, said earlier, um, uh, there were five syn little synagogues in the uh, jewelers' quarter, um, which employed uh, jewelers as well as money changers, etc. And and they all took great support from being close to each other. Uh, um, and the waterfront did, I would venture, did not did not present a particular interest to the Jewish community. Mm -hmm. um, that would explain why they uh, did not uh, purchase any property or any plots when the keys were being developed. Also, we have to remember that a lot of the com what was going on on the waterfront of Smyrna, with the uh, with the keys, etc. Uh, these were French uh, companies, and uh, from experience of how the French were ruling North Africa, especially Morocco, and uh, the way the uh, the Jews were still segregated in in Tunisia and in uh, in in some of Algeria, certainly in Morocco, up to the uh, turn of the previous century. So uh, the same sort of spirit would have reigned in in Smyrna, but uh, uh, <laughs> That's that's the conclusion I, I've reached. Although yeah. in my time we were one third in Saint Joseph's, we were one third Jews, one third Turks, Muslims, and uh, one third uh, uh, Christians of European descent, and we all got along very well. There was no enmity whatsoever. But uh, when it was time to go home, each one will go to their own area and uh, mix with their own community, within their own communities. Thank, thank you, George. Um, Ian Penderley, did I see you wave wanting to raise a question? Liz and I am sorry, uh, I, can, I don't know how to raise a hand on this uh, program on my iPad. Um, okay. I think Achilles showed in the beginning uh, a very interesting map with a different qu quarter years of Izmir. You had the Greek, the Turkish, the Armenian. If we could see that back, because if I remember correctly, there was a, a Jew quarter in the Cave of Smyrna or near the, the queue. But uh, if I also remember correctly, there was a quite a strong uh, pogrom against them, actually initiated by who said that the the Jews are sacrificing Christian children? Could this be a reason why the the Jews completely disappear, or is it? I don't know. Achilles is uh, more capable to answer this question. You said that from all the buildings of Smyrna, you could identify about two hundred out of three hundred something. Are these buildings you could identify in certain quartiers, like uh, in the Greek or the Franco, or uh, you know, in certain quartiers, or could you also identify buildings from the Turkish, from the Armenian, from the Jewish? And is it this identification that brings the the zero, or is it the pogrom? Uh, well, first, our if we could see your first slide. Great. Yes, where you have let, the me, let me explain. Let me yes, make please. It clear first. 
uh, our research is, is, is uh, only referring to the K, to the waterfront. This is where we collected our, our data. So based on the names of the uh, businessmen, uh, the owners that we met, this is how we drew the conclusion that there were no Jews uh, among them. Of course, there's a Jewish quarter, uh, more than one actually, in Smyrna, but this is uh, in the inner part of the city, in the bazaar, uh, in uh, the southern um, uh, coast uh, of the Gulf of Smyrna, like Karatash, etc. So uh, I think this uh, prosecutions, uh, the libel of the blood libel that you mentioned, of course, all the events uh, uh, that originated from the Sabbatajevic story. Uh, back in the 18th century, all this uh, made uh, the Jewish community to be more cautious uh, in exposing itself to to the rest uh, of uh, of Smyrna, and uh, of course it, it also has to do with wealth. Don't uh, don't forget that uh, uh, the key of Smyrna is, is uh, perhaps uh, the most expensive part of the city to buy property even now, even today. So when we're talking about the Jewish community of Smyrna, again, I would like to stress the fact that this is not Salonika. The, this uh, community is much poorer. It really depends on foreign help to cater for the, the members of, of it, uh, to uh, provide the, uh, education, um, uh, health, and everything. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just want to double check, Liz. Can you you do have a question? If if we'll shake your head, uh, Ian. Yes, Ian. I see Ian. If you'd like to unmute. No, you're not unmuted. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I, I simply wanted to ask. Is there, uh, I mean, during this huge expansion of um, commerce and building, there must have been um, contact with the Ottoman administration. And how was that handled? Did they have a view about the development of this um, enormous community in their midst? Uh, you mean back then, the French that built the, the quay? No, the, the Ottoman administration. Yes, but but in which year? When you mean? Well, between uh, the, the years you're talking about, eighteen seventy-five to nineteen twenty-two. Well, the, did... the, the the Ottoman administration of Smyrna was quite liberal, actually. Uh, the the city, uh, so to speak, was self-governed, uh, and there were pro-Westerners, the, the governors, the valleys of Smyrna, and uh, as long as uh, uh, the the, the communities uh, uh, took care of their of their own issues without bothering <laughs> the, the the governor. Then everything was uh, was okay. Uh, they would collect the taxes, uh, and uh, life would go on. Uh, of course, this changed a lot. The revolution of the Young Turks and uh, the years uh, uh, after that with pogroms with uh, boycotts and uh, the First World War. But uh, I would say that in, in most of the cases, the Ottoman administration was quite friendly one to all these, uh, to all these things. Jay, thank you. Um, I have a follow up, a sort of follow up question. What, what happened to the Société de Day? Uh, presumably, they made lots of money by selling the land between the first and the second new roads. Um, what, what, how did they evolve? Did they return money to investors? Did they go on to do greater and other things? Uh, they did evolve. If we uh, take, if we consider that, uh, for instance, the custom spear expanded with uh, new depots uh, at least twice um, this period that we were discussing tremendous amount of money uh, they lived 
an, an ultra luxurious life, <laughs> the Gifres, for instance. Uh, we know incidents about the, their lives that reflect how wealthy they were. And uh, I don't think it's a, it's a matter of evolution. I think uh, they knew that, that this business was a very profitable one and they, they knew that they, they were the lucky ones to run. Uh, of course, their, their position deteriorated a lot uh, in the First World War because France, they were French citizens, was on the, on the opposite side to the Ottoman Empire and uh, members of the family had to leave the country. Uh, but then they returned during the Greek administration. And uh, even after 1922, they tried to get back of, the, of their wealth as much as they could. Uh, they're, they're, um, uh, they're not exactly described as pro-Greeks in the Greek sources. Uh, the Greeks are rather angry at, at the Gifre for uh, the way he ran his business. But we must say that at least he was the one who sent ships to save the Greeks of Focha. Uh, because you understand that the French have a, a very special place in their heart for Focha as uh, the birthplace, um, the mother uh, city of Marseille. Okay, thank you. I've got a question in the chat from uh, Joanna. Um, thank you for all your hard work. Can you say something about where you found some of your information, as in which countries? For example, where did you find copies of the newspapers? Copies of the newspaper. Uh, uh, apparently, uh, the Greek parliament owns a huge collection of papers. Uh, the Library of the Greek Parliament, and on, not only that, but uh, over the last decade, they have uh, scanned all these volumes of old newspapers. So uh, for us, it was a rather easy task to find them uh, over the internet, but not such an easy task to read them. We spent hours and hours, uh, days and weeks and months with George browsing through these newspapers, but at least they are there. We don't have to travel. We don't have to go to to other places uh, to read them. We can do it uh, from uh, from our own uh, house. The Ottoman archives is a different uh, case, though. It uh, changed the uh, headquarters three times within the last uh, uh, ten years. Uh, I don't know why. And uh, you understand that throughout throughout this. Uh, moving process, uh, all this uh, information was not accessible. Uh, to be inventive, so to speak, uh, in order to get our hands on, uh, on these property maps. But the most uh, interesting part is how we, uh, how the second property map uh, of 1914 showed up. It wasn't, somebody would say that 1914 is, uh, we're still in the last years of the Ottoman Empire. The, uh, the place to find it would be the Ottoman archives. No, they were found in the Republican archives. So uh, that's the problem with uh, the libraries. If you misplace something, then you hide it forever. But uh, the explanation is that uh, since this one was the last map, uh, created of the care of Smyrna, it was used used even after the fire because it was the only sort uh, to to read. So somebody put a new file and kept it in the republics. So that's where it showed up. We were extremely lucky to have it. Okay. Um so just another couple of, from the chat, uh, just a comment from uh, James and uh, Shevnem. Uh, this is really an amazing research project and very impressive that you continue to update it. Um, so well done. Um, and uh, a question from Richard Denier. Um, what sort of evidence for architects has emerged for the end of the 19th century? Um, so so I, I'm 
taking that to mean sort of who were the architects and what were their practices locally? Maybe were they brought in from you? Well, it's, it's really all about money, right? If you can afford it, then you can find uh, the best architect that there was uh, around uh, at that time. So we do have names uh, of the architects of uh, important big buildings like the Bank d'Orient and uh, the Theater of Smyrna and uh, the, uh, Greek, the French consulate. Uh, but I understand that uh, the, the majority of the house is built uh, on the of on the quay, uh, and the mansions were were built by uh, uh, technicians uh, coming perhaps from the islands uh, of Greece that they, they knew the business without having a, a attended uh, uh, universities or uh, polytechnical schools. Uh, the, the, we know that the, uh, the workers from Timos, for instance, they were very, very, um, but they were experts, not only on uh, shaping marble, but also on the building. So uh, there is a, there's a lot of information available about uh, the architects. Okay, thank you. Um, can you sort of say a little bit more about, well, you, I think you mentioned it at the beginning, but perhaps not everyone was there when you said, what are your plans for uh, other language editions and, and you know, can, can anyone in the audience help? Let's put it like that. Uh, thank you for, uh, for this question, Quentin. Uh, we definitely want to have uh, a foreign language edition. I think uh, our book uh, interests uh, uh, a much audience than the Greek audience. And uh, English, for instance, would be uh, very nice to have. As I said, uh, our book uh, exists in uh, Harvard and Yale. In Colombia, but I, I truly wonder how students of these universities and uh, the academics read it. I hope not through Google Translate. <laughs> uh, so we do owe them a proper English uh, edition. Having said that, this is a huge work, translation costs, uh, pub publications cost, and we definitely don't want uh, to cut on our uh, material, we want to publish it as it is. Okay, so if anyone has any suggestions, uh, potential sources of funds, uh, please contact uh, Achilles and, and George Bulimenos. Um, so uh, another question has uh, come in um, from SP, I'm not sure who that is, but what is the link with New Smyrna in Athens? Uh, thank you and many compliments on your projects. New Smyrna is uh, uh, one of these uh, municipalities that were created after 1922 around Athens. They form actually a ring around Athens uh, for the millions of uh, ref flooded Piraeus. And uh, to be honest, uh, I think it's not uh, the most typical uh, uh, of this uh, cities but uh, definitely it was uh, uh, the, the need to create it was uh, 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 backed by uh, people coming from Smyrna who persuaded uh, the Greek state to give them land barren land uh, between the sea and Athens and there they uh, not only uh, built their homes but also tried to revive institutions uh, of Smyrna that uh, they knew and uh, had grown up with, like Evangeliki Scholi. Now in New Smyrna, there is a new Evangeliki Scholi. Actually, it's a high school, but this doesn't say anything. It, it, it keeps the memory of, of the place. And uh, also, they try to create new landmarks, like the Belfry of Aief uh, of Saint Fotini. Now there is uh, um, a new one built there. The Temple of uh, Saint John from uh, Apano Mahala, uh, when it was uh, 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 transferred from Smyrna to Athens, it was 
how it was uh, uh, placed inside the church in New Smyrna. So in many ways, uh, uh, Nea Smyrna carries uh, the tradition and, and the memory of old one. Okay, thank you very much. Um, oh, so that's from Stefania. Thank you very much for your question. Um, so any last questions, comments, thoughts, suggestions? Otherwise, I've got one last question. Is there any sources that are missing, gaps in, because you know, I imagine that some records may just don't know where they are, but maybe someone knows. Are there any that you're particularly looking for? Oh, and, and Angela has a question. And I'll answer my question, then we'll go to Angela. Actually, on, Angela, it's your question. Uh, it's your question. Oh, okay, thank you. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Carry on. May uh, I? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, I, I just know that um, in uh, I am in Poland, and I know that our national archives, the Confederation archives in Bern, have a, a tre is a treasure trove of old documents and uh, many countries, many um, governments uh, that wanted to save the documents from the destroyed from, I don't know, let's say a new Turkish government or whatever. They deposit archives here and I wanted to ask if uh, um, would like uh, me or uh, himself, he's always welcomed here, to have a look, pose a question to the Swiss Federal Archive. I know, for instance, they, they have a story about this Swiss Schindler who Greeks in 1922. Yeah, and maybe they have a you're referring to yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You're referring yeah, to so yes. maybe the yeah. federal archives we might have stuff about Smyrna. Uh, I'm I'm sure yes, that I'm uh, I'm sure that the archives related to Smyrna are all over the globe, <laughs> even in South uh, America, because uh, the diaspora of people from uh, from Anatolia and from Smyrna uh, extends as far as there so it's only a matter of time and money uh, for somebody who wants to research all these sources and i would advise uh, to uh, always uh, learn uh, th those languages that uh, are not very popular like armenian uh, and to learn how to read the ottoman because uh, you never know what you're going to uh, uh, within these archives, and it's a, it's a shame not to be accessible just because of this uh, barrier um, of the language. That's a very good point, and thank you, Angela, for the question. Um, and so one of the things that, of course, we as Levantine Heritage Foundation is to make connections between people, uh, researchers, and sources, and uh, act as the go-between. So if you do have any suggestions? Would like to connect with Achilles, Then do uh, you know, contact us, and we will pass them on. Um, it's not it's, if I, I may uh, make a. It's no coincidence that uh, me and George met seven times symposium back in two thousand ten. So if it wasn't for uh, LHF, perhaps uh, this book would never have happened. Well, well thank you, and. Uh, well, and may the connection last. Um, we're delighted to um, see again your work and to learn about your new uh, information that you, you've discovered um, and look very much to sharing that through our website and, and with our network. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Achilles, for your, for your talk. George Pulimenos, I know, also contributing to the work, uh, to everyone who's contributed uh, to, to this evening. Thank you, uh, and I wish you good evening. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Thank you, Thank you, everybody. Very, very interesting.